Good morning and welcome to Salem's Online Worship Service. Delighted that you have joined us here on the 21st of February. Uh, we are in the first Sunday in the Lenten season and uh, glad that you are joining us for our worship of our Lord and Savior. If you're visiting with us, uh, a guest of our online worship service, a special warm welcome to you. Glad that you could join us. We will be celebrating Holy Communion this day and we ask that you um, bring your own wine or bread or grape juice uh, to the communion and serve yourself at home. If you don't have those uh, elements at your home, we have kits and we'd love to bring one to you. So if you need some, you can either come to the church office, uh, please call ahead of time, or you can uh, have us deliver one to you. Uh, the, during the Lenten season, uh, we will be having our Wednesday services on a regular basis. We have temporarily suspended the prayer service through Lent. We'll pick that up after Lent uh, is ended. We have devotionals. You can receive those uh, down by the elevator door if you have a key. If not, call the church office. We can put one outside for you or we can even mail one to you. Uh, that would be a, a fine thing to do. Got Change. It's a wonderful program. We started here at uh, Salem Lutheran. We encourage you to collect your change at home. Uh, lots of us have several drawers and piggy banks full of change, and we're going to be collecting for Feed My Starving Children this year. We began last week at Ash Wednesday, and we will collect throughout Easter. And so we ask that you begin to set aside your change at home, and we'll be collecting it in a celebration uh, last year, we received great response for that for uh, Second Harvest. And this year, as you see, we are collecting for Feed My Starving Children, a program that many of you have been involved in. Thank you for your generous giving. This is Minnesota Food Share Month. March is the, the month that we collect food. And uh, we're taking monetary donations due to the COVID pandemic so write your check to Salem Lutheran Church with March Food Drive written in the memo line. You can either drop it off in the mail slot, you can mail it in. Uh, we can also take no donations directly to neighbors. We appreciate your generosity. Uh, Moreland Elementary is in need of good condition snow pants, uh, kid sizes six to nine. You'll see the details on the announcements. There's some other things that they are in need of, and uh, we appreciate your generosity to that project. These are our young people in our community, and uh, we need to show our appreciation for them uh, by helping them out. Indoor Bible studies continue on Thursdays at 1. If you'd like to join us, please uh, sign up ahead of time. Love to have you come and join us. 1 o'clock on Thursdays. Once again, we welcome you to our worship service. It's time to worship. It's getting a little cold out here. We will go into the warmth of the sanctuary.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, keeper of the covenant, source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly and Father, in the waters of the flood, flood you saved the chosen, chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation, you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. 
Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading is from 1 Peter 3, verses 18 through 22. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. is recorded in the second chapter of St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in the front of the door, and he was speaking to them the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carrying by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowds, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorifying God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
God's grace and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. I like to watch this uh, low-cost network. It's a secondary channel called Dabble. It shows some of these HDTV type shows, only it's free. I don't have to get cable to watch it. And one of the things I've noticed during the shows is there's a plethora of ads about all things medical, whether it's eating well, life insurance, oh, there's lots and lots of weight loss programs, patches to help you stop smoking, exercises to keep you limber, pills for ills that I've never even heard of before. Back a few years ago, I had taken a retreat with Pat Kieffert, and uh, he's one of our expert theologians from Luther Seminary. Pat had struggled with his weight for many, many years, and he told us, you know, there will always be weight loss programs. Because where the mind is willing, the flesh is weak, and sin abounds. But whether it's cigarettes or chocolate, it seems like there's an overwhelming temptation in connection between healing and sin. Now, Jesus prescribes an, a spiritual antidote to our physical healing that's prevalent in our story to say, but I want to make sure that it doesn't imply what Jesus is saying, doesn't imply our ailments are a cause of sin. I'll say that one more time. Our ailments are not a cause of sin, but our own experiences validate that there's a spiritual component to our physical being, our physical health. Forgiveness and healing are ground together in the same mortar. And today, Jesus' authority both heals and forgives, breaking the fever of oppression. Now, we're we'll going to oftentimes to great lengths to heal. My neighbor went to Mexico back in the 1970s for a purported cure to his cancer. I know people who travel around the world to the Mayo Clinic to be healed. I've witnessed people who will go through numerous chemotherapy rounds to be healed. And I just read where a 90-year-old woman walked six miles in the Seattle snow for a COVID-19 vaccine. And I'm not sure, but sometimes I think it's even harder to watch a friend or a child journey through an untimely illness. Louise told the beautiful story during her prayer service last week of her friend and walking alongside and how difficult that was to do that. And I have witnessed myself the dedication of family and friends helping someone heal, whether it's driving them to numerous doctor appointments or keeping the family at home in order by feeding them. And this is where we enter the story today. For the friends of the paralytic will do anything to find Jesus. Concerned, what would you do for a friend who is ill, for a friend who is sick? I know folks who will spend thousands of dollars on their pets alone. Think how much more we would do for a child or a spouse. And that's where our story is today. For something is happening in Galilee that's new and exciting and attracting the crowds. Now, maybe some of you older folks remember something called Cabbage Patch Dolls. You remember that? You remember how they would pack the stores trying to buy one for their child? Or if you're even older, you might remember when the Metrodome down in Minneapolis was packed because the twins were in the World Series. You could hardly get in the doors. I was there, it was amazing. And now we see lines and lines of people lining the streets. Even though we try to keep them separated, the crowds are lining up to get their vaccines. So you can imagine the excitement 
When Jesus heals better than any vaccine, he's throwing demons on their backside and he's challenging the religious authorities who have turned their backs on the sick, the poor, and the oppressed. The scene is exciting. And perhaps, perhaps it went a little bit like this. There's some good conspiratorial evidence of the ancient world, but the four friends actually had a name. Their names were J.R., Milt N., Carl L., and Michelle R. And they came bounding one day onto Paul W.'s porch. Now, Paul W. was working on his roof one weekend, the garage, the Mahal garage, you know, that palace-like garage that he has, and he tumbled to his sidewalk and hurt himself. And so they bounded onto the porch, and here's Paul watching the lizards eat the flies, laying down on his nice bed. Paul, Paul, they, ride up, they run up to him. Are you up for a bike ride? You have to come with us. We found a healer who can heal you. Sure, Paul says, just like that snake charmer who wrapped a spitting cobra around my neck while he played the flute. My eyes are still stinging. No, I'm just gonna stay here and lie down and watch the lizards eat flies all day. How could you suggest I even take a bike ride? I'm laying on a cot for heaven's sake. J.R. quips, you know, ever since you fell off that roof and broke your back, you've just lost all sense of adventure. Come on, guys, Michelle encourages, let's go pick him up and take him. He's been such a whiner lately. Paul argues, no, put me down, you ding-dongs. By the way, that was first used in ancient Greek in an argument between Plato and Socrates. Milt and Carl, they grab the front of the cot while Michelle and JR, they grab the back of the cot and they lift Paul onto their shoulders and carry him into the town to the place where Jesus spoke. To their amazement, the house was already filled. It was like church on Easter morning, not a place to squeeze in. And they looked at the mass and let alone with poor Paul on their shoulders, how would they get him into the building, into that home where Jesus spoke? And they said that worst case is we're gonna drop him someplace in the mass of people and he's going to get trampled. See, I told you this thing wasn't meant to be. Take me home before you drop me on my head. It's the only thing working, Paul spewed. Milt retorts, well, that's true. Your mouth still works fine. Now be quiet and let us think for a moment. Just then, Michelle lit up. She pointed to the ladder against the backside of the house. Her grin strode ear from ear. Oh, no, you don't, Paul trembles. How do you think I got this way in the first place? And what in the world do you plan on doing once we get up there? So Michelle climbs up the ladder and she pulls out her trusty letter opener and she begins to dig through the mud and the thatch. I know I'm going to die now, Paul mutters. They're going to bury me. Why couldn't you just leave me at home to watch my lizards? Hoisting Paul now up the ladder, the four of friends set him down on the roof. About then, the quiet, the, the quiet audience started to gather, not only inside the building, but outside the building. Michelle began to dig, continue that vigorous digging. When she got to the last layer of the roof, you could hear the pieces of thatch and mud falling to the people below. And you could tell from the commotion outside that the folks inside knew something was Oh, you guys are going to be in deep trouble with OSHA, Paul said. And though Paul complains, he's really pleased that his friends care enough to go through all this trouble. 
As dirt falls from the thick roof, the opening becomes wider and wider, and all the folks in the living room are starting to look up, watching for the dust in their eyes. The foursome pull off their ropes off of their robes, and they tie them to the side of Paul's bed, and slowly they lower Paul into the living room. When finally he hits the ground, he sees 50 pairs of eyes staring at him in the living room. But one set steps forward. And before speaking to Paul, he looks up into the hole. He says, J.R. Carl, Michelle Miltz, you have astounding faith. You have brought your friend. And he looks at Paul and he says, your sins are forgiven. Paul is puzzled and he looks up at the four staring at him from the roof. My sins are forgiven, thought Paul. You drop me down to the, through a roof nearly killing me and you say my sins are forgiven? That's God's business. What are you going to do about me? Now, as Paul was muttering, he missed what Jesus said initially. So he had to repeat it, and he says, get up. You no longer need your bed. You are free from the chains. Wake up and walk out. But Paul said, I just got my sleep number adjusted. To the shock, he looked at his legs. And he realized he could move them. And he started like a marionette, lifting his legs slowly, one by one. And he looked up at his friends and he says, look at me, guys. Should I dance first? To which Michelle uttered, you never did dance. Why would you start now? <laughs> ah, but well maybe he could bike. You know, there's times I wish I could hear the after story of what happened. Did Paul take them out for pizza afterward? Maybe he did go dancing. Take your bed with you and go. The crowd divided like the Red Sea as Paul walks through with his bed in tow. And perhaps the bed is a reminder of where he was before he met Jesus. A reminder that what we are before we met Jesus, what we are without Jesus, sleeping, paralyzed. This Jesus does something with authority that the religious authorities would not or could not do. This Jesus' authority cannot be diluted or circumvented. This authority belongs to Jesus. We've had some conversations in the state of Minnesota about executive authority of the governor and how it deals with the Minnesota Constitution. That's a discussion that needs to be sorted out. But the scribes in our story today certainly upset with Jesus. And certainly, when the paralytic stands, they remain quiet because what can they do? This authority came from God. We know they're steaming red hot about this forgiving sin business. It's blasphemy. It's contrary to the law and tradition, the entire gamut of the Jewish faith. But Jesus has the authority. I visited a member in a hospital and I met Hay and his wife. And the 40 year old came in with heart issues. And after the testing, one of the medical staff told them in passing that the news was quite dire and he had some severe heart issues. And I don't recall the details, but I remember walking in seeing the tears and the terror on their face. Calming down, they told me the story, and finally I asked them, what did the cardiologist say? They said, well, the doctor hasn't been in yet. 
said, maybe you should talk to the one in authority first. And so the next day when I visited them, their disp disposition was entirely changed, for the news was not so dire after all. That medical staff person might have claimed to authority and claimed a spokesman like the scribes, but it was the doctor who had the real authority. The scribes may claim to be authoritative. Jesus proves this authority. The scribes might know the law. Jesus knows his Father in heaven. The scribes care about the law. Jesus cares about you and your friends. Get up, he says. For walking is a sign of forgiveness. And I might even argue that it's harder to forgive or ask for forgiveness than it is to be cured. In our world today, a situation demands that we had never admit a mistake or take responsibility for our actions. Otherwise, we would be judged by the court of public opinion. Yet the greatest gift that Jesus gives us is forgiveness. It is a gift of healing, reconciliation. As Christians, it's the greatest gift that we can share. You are forgiven. So, let us take up our cots, our beds, and walk. I can dance. I can walk. God has made us his people through baptism. Living in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join in our prayers of intercession as each petition ends with, Lord, in your mercy, congregation responds with, Hear our prayer. prayer. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near us in every place, in every time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Guide us to prayer, to pray for our friends, our family, who are in special need of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world, that they may, may maintain a justice for the lowly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer. We pray especially for Kathy and Carl. Gib and all family and friends of Lori. Family and friends of Matt S. Pam R. Diane and Peter H. Sean R, Rebecca Z, family and friends of Chuck P. We pray for those in Texas struggling without power. We pray for those around the country who are being affected by the recent storms. We pray for those whom we offer in our hearts before you at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the covenant of baptism, you, you claim us as beloved children, nurture us in, your, in our baptismal identity, and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen our congregation's ministries of care and concern to those who are shut in, those who are ill. We pray for our children during this difficult time as they try to learn of the faith through Zoom and other virtual means. We pray that they will still be raised up to seek you in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, and also with you. I invite you to share God's peace with one another. If you are home with family and friends, certainly share God's peace. Also, I invite you to share God's peace with other folks in the church neighborhood, uh, maybe through a phone call, through an email, uh, through Zoom, if you will. But I invite you to do so as we continue to stay a strong and united community. Thank you.
God, you have given us life, this community, and these gifts of the earth that become the means of your grace. Move in our hearts that we might use your gifts to bring hope and blessing wherever we go, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, and be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.